On April 6, 1969, a group of friends make their way to the city of Mount Gambier on the southern tip of South Australia to enjoy a relaxing day at Kelsby Sinkhole. Three of them went into the water and attempt to dive to 60 meters or 197 feet, but only one of them would return. This is their story. It was Sunday, April 6, 1969. A group of 10 friends would decide to go to the picturesque Kelsby Sinkhole in Mount Gambier to do some swimming and diving. The Sinkhole is in South Australia, on private property owned by the Kelsby family since the 19th century. Situated in the middle of a barren field, the location of the Sinkhole is unremarkable. Once you make your way from the city and drive halfway down Sister Road, you come across a small barn-like structure with the words Kelsby Sinkhole written on it. The sinkhole itself is gated, surrounded by a chain-linked fence, offering an inviting view to anyone who would look through the fence and into the sinkhole with its crystal clear water. At 11 a.m., the group of 10 friends arrived at Kelsby Sinkhole, got out of their cars, and started to unpack their gear. In the group were divers George, Patrick, Carrie, and Brett, who had been at the sinkhole the previous day on a dive, making it all the way down to 55 meters before having to resurface. Most of the group planned to either swim or snorkel in the water, while Brett, George, and Philip planned to once again go on a deep dive, with Kerry staying topside, taking care of the guideline. George had brought his camera to take pictures. He would stay topside for a bit to take pictures of Brett and Patrick as they began their descent, and then join them a short time later. Being the more experienced diver, George advised the pair not to go in too deep. But Brad and Patrick had different plans, wanting to scratch their names on the cave wall at around 60 meters deep. They had a false sense of confidence having completed a similar dive the previous day. This would prove costly. After George took photos of Brad and Patrick, the pair went into the crystal clear water and using the strong sun behind them, started making their descent into the sinkhole. The group had brought a 50 meter guideline that they would extend from the surface that they would then tie off before trying to make it lower into the cave. Brett and Patrick tied off at 28 meters before diving the rest of the way with the main guideline in the sinkhole. On the surface, George had put his camera away and started to get ready to join Brett and Patrick on the dive. George had intended to follow the guideline down to where it was tied off, but as he was preparing to go into the water, he realized that the guideline had come undone and he no longer saw it. Concerned with this fact, George proceeded to dive without the guideline and dove to the 28 meter mark where he saw the guideline free floating in the water. It's not known how much time passed between Brett and Patrick going in and George, but when he made it to that depth, there was no sign of Brett or Patrick. He quickly looked at his air gauge and decided to wait there for 5 minutes, hoping that the other divers would appear, but with each passing second, he grew more and more concerned and decided to resurface. Once back up, George looked around, eventually spotting Carrie. Almost out of breath, he asked Carrie if Brett and Patrick had resurfaced, hoping that maybe they had passed them on the way up and they simply missed each other. With almost a hesitation in his voice, Carrie replied that they had not. At this point, George's concerns only grew larger. He quickly looked at his air gauge again deciding to go back down to look for the missing divers. George made it all the way back down to 28 meters, and at this point, he had to switch to his reserved air. Knowing he didn't have much time left, George frantically looked around, trying to find any indication of the two missing divers. But all he saw was the haunting stillness of the water. After a few minutes, George looked back at his air gauge and realized it was getting critically low. As he turned to ascend, from the corner of his eyes, he saw a faint light gently bobbing up and down in the water, and as he got closer and closer to it, he noticed that it was a flashlight, the same one the group was using. When he was almost right on the light, he realized that behind it were two lifeless bodies gently perched on the wall of the sinkhole, with one being on its back. Upon realizing this, George froze trying to process exactly what he was seeing, unable to come to grasp with the fact that these were the bodies of his friends.
coming out of his frozen state, George went right into a frantic one and swam upwards towards the surface as fast as he could. George went up so fast that he burst through the surface of the water, most likely alarming some of the waterside guests as they enjoy a beautiful day, oblivious to what had just occurred in the waters below. George, out of breath, told the group what he saw and they quickly called the police. With Mount Gambier being a famous spot with multiple sinkholes in the area, the police arrived shortly, accompanied by recovery divers. The bodies of Brett and Patrick were recovered three hours later. The record of the recovery showed that when the divers got to the bodies, the lights were still on, blowing a foreboding path to the location of the two lifeless bodies. The report also shows that Brett's equipment was still intact, but it was a different story for Patrick, having lost his mask, snorkel, and light, probably as he started to realize the dire situation he was in, and slowly running out of air, started thrashing around, trying to survive. For whatever reason, once out of the sinkhole, the two bodies were sent to the morgue, where they would stay for nearly a month awaiting examination. A local doctor performed the autopsy on the pair of divers. He stated, in my opinion, death was the result of an air embolism due to decompression. Simply put, they died from decompression sickness, aka the bends, while still underwater perhaps from a rapid ascent as they were fatally underprepared for such a deep dive and it cost them their lives. Thank you for watching.